You know, everything about having revival is not complicated. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about some of these things today on All Things Apostolic. Well, welcome to All Things Apostolic on this Monday, September the 16th, 2024. I am glad that you've tuned in to be with us today, and uh, we're just going to talk about some exciting things. Last week, well, actually two weeks ago, we announced it was going to talk about three things that are opposers to church growth and, uh, and uh, to revival. So, um, and we're going to talk about that today, but we just almost, now not always, but we almost always start by, uh, by talking about some good reports, some really good reports. And so, um, uh, La Roca yesterday uh, had uh, one receive the Holy Ghost and one get baptized, I believe, but one got the Holy Ghost who is a med student and well on their way to becoming a doctor. Um, and uh, came to church, one of the other students who's in the med program that is a member of La Roca invited them and they came to church and uh, uh, the Holy Ghost got a hold of them and they were tremendously touched and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So. Uh, this is a great. Now there's three med students uh, I understand now in La Roca that are in the same program and um, are a long ways into it already uh, in the med program. So uh, this is just a, this is just interesting, and it shows you that people are hungry, sincere people who are intelligently aware that we all have a need that we can't meet outside of the Spirit of God. Uh, they, they come to church, they're curious, and uh, they hear the truth preached, the power of the gospel, which God willing, I could change, or the Holy Ghost could direct me otherwise, but uh, I'm going to talk about the power of the gospel. Uh, this is a little ways off, but at no limits in, um, in March, I'll we'll preach there at that conference. And, um, and so the power of the gospel, the, power, the, the, the way the gospel works, um, and it is indiscriminate, it's egalitarian, it, uh, it works, some people think it only works on certain people that are just down and out and uneducated and about to fall off the financial cliff. It works there. Uh, others think it just works where, the, where, where there's drug addicts and alcoholics and people who have uh, addictions of all kinds, and uh, you're right, it works there. But it works everywhere. And um, it works among people who are aware, keenly aware, of the existential incompleteness of humanity, including themselves. And so they are searching and looking for that which is real. This is, a, um, this is key. This is not going to stop. Some people say, well, at some point, the devil will get so strong that the gospel won't work anymore. No, no, no. That's never going to happen. The gospel is stronger <laughs> than the devil. The gospel is stronger than anything in the world. The gospel is the most resilient thing there is. It's actually eternally set and fixed, and uh, it will work forever. And so people come to God, and when they believe the message they've heard, they repent of their sins, and um, they receive the baptism or the infilling of the Holy Ghost, uh, and they're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They become a part of his family. They take his name. That's an official act of taking uh, the name of your new family and of your new daddy. And uh, so this is happening. This is, this is happening. And uh, as this little account I'm telling you right now uh, is so true, this happens for anybody and everybody who's hungry to know. So I mentioned last week about um, the Rock Church in Fort Myers, in Fort Myers, Florida. There's a lot of forts in, in Florida. But uh, in Fort Myers, Florida, 
pastored by Pastor Randy Williams. And I mentioned that last night, he, last week, he just dropped me a little note and said, we baptized 25 or 28, I believe it was, 28, I think it was, this morning. That was last Sunday, not yesterday, but the Sunday before that. Um, and on, out of the 28, there was another 18, or probably the, some of the 28, 18 received um, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So, and that was just, just on that Sunday, just on that Sunday. So this past weekend, this past weekend, just, just yesterday, this weekend, um, he baptized 17 more and uh, 22 received the Holy Ghost. So there's, in, in those eight days, there's 53 baptized and 52 that's received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in those eight days. And if those figures didn't add up, uh, it's because I missed some. So 54 and 53 in those eight days. So some people now, some people say that there is revival, uh, but, but not in America, that you, you can have revival, but you won't have revival in America. So we're, of course, uh, well, we don't believe that. We are having revival in America, and uh, there are others that are having revival in America, and there are hungry people in America. Uh, and um, it's, it's everybody. Some of it is migration. Some of it is uh, people native to America, born in America. Uh, uh, it, it's every nation and tongue. And where we are at here in Sacramento and Elk Grove, California, um, they are regularly in the top two or three or four um, of the most multi cultural nation, uh, cities in the nation, uh, and maybe in the world, uh, because it's not just that one culture has been invaded by another culture that's coming in, but um, here it's cultures, plural. And uh, in, in all of those cultures, it is so exciting to see what's happening. In all of those cultures, we're getting breakthroughs, little groups in each of those and uh, those groups now are are growing. They're they're developing a uh, what I would call a hardcore, um, a, a a core that has crystallized in their understanding of God. They are now stable. Um, they're not wishy washy, and uh, and then that core understands the gospel, and they begin to transfer that to other people in their particular uh, ethnic group. So it's an amazing thing to watch, and it's an exciting thing to watch. And as I've mentioned before, one of the things happening now is that uh, uh, that's moving forward and has moved forward. It has taken years to get traction. Um, is uh, is Indians, Pakistani uh, uh, people from India, um, uh, whatever nations have the, the 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 Indian culture, Fiji, and so. These, these things are happening, and they're very, very, very real. Um, the Chinese community is growing in the church. Uh, of course, Hispanic community is growing in the church. What I just started out with today was a Hispanic congregation uh, that has church Sunday afternoon at the Rock Church, and, um, and numerous others that are growing. And so we're excited about that, but we're certainly not satisfied. There needs to be a lot more. So what is a, uh, I mentioned last week, one of the things that impedes growth or opposes growth uh, and revival in, in a Pentecostal apostolic church. Uh, today I want to mention another one. And uh, this one is, this one is true uh, but I'm talking about it a little bit carefully here because we're certainly not throwing stones. Uh, but you, one of the opposers of a person, a leader's ability to lead their church into revival is uh, being part of groups that throw revival under the bus. 
having your primary relational base of friends and fellowship with people that do not have revival and speak even worse, some of these speak disparagingly of revival and are always looking for an excuse of why people are having revival. Like, um, well, they must be compromising to be having revival. Um, and then they will look with a fine tooth comb to find anything in the world that they can uh, that, that seems to validate what they're saying. And so now you can see here their whole focus is ending up, maybe even subconsciously or unconsciously, is ending up to be anti because of personalities or because revival is actually a threat to people, oftentimes. It's a threat because, because if they're not having revival, then um, it, it's a threat to them. Why is this guy having revival and you're not having revival? And so we, we all have uh, an ego and uh, we all have to respect ourselves to some extent to live with ourselves. And so we create these uh, cardboard houses that are just a house of cards uh, that you just hit it like that and down it goes. So you, you, you cannot constantly uh, ingest that kind of talk without it having the counterbalance of being where people say, no, you can have this in your church. You, this is real. If you don't believe it, come and visit. Just come. Don't tell anybody you're coming and sit on the pew and watch for yourself. At any of these churches, there's scores of churches that are having revival. And you can go to any of them and you can see this is, this is working. It's like just last week, we had a, a gentleman who's been to our church a number of times, a very intelligent man, and a very talented man, uh, he's been around, he's not a kid, and um, he's not a preacher, but he's a, a, a worship leader and a leader among people just in general. And uh, he was asking his bishop, why are we not having revival like these people are having revival? What, what's, why are we not having this? And in the process of that, the church they're in has made a lot of compromises over the years, um, has uh, been led with theories that are newly coined but unproven, um, that are not working, that believe the, the old-fashioned gospel. When you say the old-fashioned gospel, you're just talking about something eternal. So it's not only old-fashioned, it's the most cutting-edge thing in the future because it goes both ways. But they just believe that, that uh, they've, they've got to have these little things that are a matter of temporary methodologies or are fashionable or particularly user friendly to be able to to win people so um, so you got to think about what do my friends talk about the people I run with do they talk about revival and about reaching the world and about the possibilities and about the kingdom of God and about the doctrine and about uh, what God's doing in the world uh, or is their focus always something else their new automobile or their new game they're learning or their new hobby they have or uh, their personal uh, business and so forth uh, and where is the mind of the people that you run with what are they thinking about what are they what is constantly in their mind so these are all part and parcel of of, of this. And so when you, when you run with people's revival, the other thing that goes with that is you can't be afraid to ask questions and you can't be afraid to see it and then let that transfer to you instead of feeling like, well, I've got to keep my own identity and I've got to let people know I didn't get this from over here. Or I'm independent of this. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. You need to embrace anybody that is having revival that's willing to be your friend and, and, of course, is continuing to teach truth all of the time. So um, the, the truth of the matter is, you, you, you know, some people say, well, I'm preaching holiness or I'm preaching something else. The truth of the matter is you can't have holiness without revival. 
You can't keep holiness. You can keep laws without revival, but you can't keep holiness. Holiness is as dynamic as revival is. And it's a living thing because we are living and we are the holy ones, which is what saints means, holy ones. And we are alive. And so life is dynamic. And so holiness has the dynamism. It doesn't mean it changes with the ages, but it means that you have to be living. You have to be living in that and living in holiness will produce revival if you've got real holiness. So we can talk about this some more, but we're glad you're with us, and we're glad that you have uh, joined us, and we hope that you're joining every week as we move through this. So think about this, because the other thing about friends is, is I have a lot of friends, and I have friends that are people that I do not allow myself to spend much time with other than to be kind because I love them, but um, but they are... they it's always down. It's always why we're not having it, the reasons this can't happen. And uh, those are wonderful people in many cases, but they're, they're off. They're off. And I cannot, I've only got one life and I cannot allow that to affect me. And you need to think about that. We all need to think about that. And we need to be, we need to be, we need to be in a school of prophets where the Holy Ghost and the purposes of God reign Supreme.